Well, gang, that is a turtle. Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the Gamera series with Gamera 2, Attack of Legion. Now, this came out in Japan in 1996, and this is the 10th film in the Gamera franchise, but the second of what is now known as the Heisei Gamera Trilogy. Called that because these films came out when Japan was in its Heisei period. The film acts as a direct sequel to 1995's Gamera Guardian of the Universe, which was a reboot of the Gamera franchise that really reinvented this franchise and reinvented this character and took the Gamera series in a much more adult and serious direction. Now, the film was once again directed by Shusuke Kaneko and written by Kazunori Ito. Now, I do think Attack of Legion is probably Probably my least favorite of the 90s trilogy, but that's not to say it's bad. I still think this is a very well-made kaiju film and is probably one of the best of the genre. It's just compared to the first one and especially compared to the third one, I think it's the weakest of the trilogy. Now, what the plot of Gamera 2 is it's set sometime after the events of Guardian of the Universe. Parts of Tokyo are still in ruins after Gamera's battle with Gauss, and even though Gamera saved the world from Gauss, the JSDF and the Japanese government are still not sure if they can trust this creature. But in this movie, a meteor lands, bringing with it these giant insect-like aliens. These creatures, which are later dubbed Legion, are multiplying at a rapid rate. Eventually, Gamera comes to destroy the Legion, but they ultimately defeat him, or so it seems. Now the JSDF must race against time to destroy these creatures before they overpopulate the Earth. And now mankind's last hope is in the resurrection of Gamera. Now, one thing that's interesting about Gamera 2 is the film actually has a lot of religious undertones, particularly Christian undertones, which is interesting because even though I know Christianity does have a presence in Japan, it's nowhere near as prevalent over there as it is in Western countries. Like, I believe Shinto and Buddhism are a lot more prevalent in Japan than Christianity is. But in the film, Legion get their name from the biblical story. In the Bible, there's a story of Jesus performing an exorcism on this man who is possessed by demons, and he asks the man who was possessed, what is your name? And he says, Legion, for we are many. Also in the film, Gamera does basically die, but then he's resurrected, much like Jesus was. And in the film, you have these people praying for Gamera's resurrection. Now, for the most part, the religious undertones are relatively subtle in the film. However, the title sequence does open up with an image of a cross. This movie also ups the fantasy elements, where even though you realize that Gamera was a creature created by an ancient civilization of people, there's more of the implication that there's something mystical and magical going on with Gamera. Like, even though the creature itself is man-made, it appears that Gamera is actually an avatar for a much older force, a spiritual, possibly godlike force that most likely predates man. It's also interesting that most of the characters who are praying for Gamera's resurrection are children, implying that children are in touch with things that adults simply are not, but that scene is also meant to be a nod to the original Gamera series, where Gamera was the friend of all children. Now, the summation in the film is excellent, and I would say is some of the best examples of the art form, and the special effects in the movie, for the most part, still hold up very well today. There is some CGI in the film that doesn't really hold up the best today, but the film did come out in 1996, so you gotta cut the movie some slack. The movie also has some cool horror elements, like the scene where the baby Legion attack the subway train really does feel like a scene out of a straight horror movie, and it also reminded me a lot of movies like Mimic and other giant bug movies. 
Now, the human characters in the film, I do think, are relatively forgettable, especially compared to the human cast from the previous film, but they're by no means unlikable, but I do think they're the film's weakest element. In the film, you follow these two scientists and a military man who works for the JSDF. But I will say, after rewatching the film, I do think the characters are likable enough, and there is a pretty funny moment where the character of Midori, played by Mickey Mizuno, invites the other two main characters to her apartment, which is upstairs from the pharmacy where her parents work. And her father is constantly looking upstairs, wondering what the hell his daughter's doing with these two strange men. You do have Ayago Fujitami coming back to reprise her role as the character of Asagi from Guardian of the Universe, and it was great seeing her again, even though her role in the film is relatively small. Yukijiro Hotaru comes back to reprise his role as Inspector Osako from the previous film. However, in this film, he's now a security guard at a warehouse because you find out that following the events of Guardian of the Universe, he quit his job as a police inspector because he was so traumatized from his experience with the Gauss. He only shows up in the beginning of the film, however. But yeah, Gamera 2 Attack of Legion, while not being the best of the Heisei Gamera trilogy, is still a solid, well-made kaiju film, and I do recommend it if you're a fan of this franchise, and if you're a fan of the genre. Now, I almost feel like this movie kind of inspired the second Millennium Godzilla film, Godzilla vs. Megaguirus. Like, I noticed some similarities between the two films, but that was my review on Gamera 2 Attack of Legion, and bye.